What is good, YouTube Quinway Basketball Analysis? Coming to y'all with free agency day eight. We finally got more traction and more movement from a lot of role players. An update on Laurie Marketing and just some other things going on around the league. So this is a good day for pretty much a lot of teams considering that the other days was very, very, very slow. We actually got news that's worth talking about more in depth um, today, which is good for the NBA and good for the fans because their teams get better, a little better, a little whatever, but you will take it. So I thought that today was very interesting when it comes to um, certain free agents, even like Dennis Schroeder, who is probably the biggest name that got signed today. Considering that he played well with the Lakers outside of the playoffs, a lot of people knew that the Lakers wanted him. A lot of people knew that the Lakers was trying to pay him um, as much as they could that they felt was reasonable. And then the shooter ultimately didn't accept none of those deals and chose to go into free agency where he ended up getting replaced by Russell Westbrook. And now he's signing a $5.9 million deal. And it's only one year, by the way, for people that care with my Boston Celtics. And even though I'm not that high on Dennis Schroeder, I don't think he's the greatest player. I don't think he's the best player. He's worth five point nine million. Honestly, he can score. He can get to the rack. He can hit threes from time to time. He can play in the pick and roll a little bit. Um, but for five point nine million, you're getting a starting quality player for that. You would take it just like every other team that been doing it throughout free agency. He wanted more, nine point five million. I don't think that's bad for him either. Um, but we would take five point nine for a starting caliber player. We would take that if you were Celtics. We needed a little bit of an upgrade, you know, at, at the backup. We got Peyton Pritchard and those type of guys. But, you know, I feel like Dennis Shooter is going to be on a mission this year to prove that he's worth a little bit more as if he does play well. He can opt in. I mean, not opt in. He can go to, you know, sign next year with somebody else. I do think he is getting older and he is what he is at this point when it comes to the player that he is and what he does well. I don't really see him being a legitimate starter probably again because when you look at most teams, they either got a future point guard or they can draft one in this upcoming draft if they suck um, enough. And other than that, every other team pretty much got a starting point guard already. So I don't really see Dennis Schroeder being a starter anymore, probably in the league, which is probably why he should have signed the extension with the Lakers. But whatever the reason was that he couldn't do it, why he didn't want to do it, it fell, it fell on his face on this one. And he pretty much got the lowest deal he probably got offered. And the Celtics, as a fan, I'm not going to complain getting Dennis Schroeder. Like I said, not the greatest player, not the best player. But this type of player for this type of salary, plus you you can let him go next year. Ain't like we giving him a, a ninety million to stitch or eighty million to stitch in. We not losing any way it goes in this situation. So why not pick up a player like Dennis Schroeder? Plus we do need an upgrade at the point guard position or backup point guard if they want to start Marcus Smart, who isn't as great of a scorer but has improved, but is a significantly better defender. And I think it's due. He, he's been coming off the bench for so long. They even try to start him sometimes with certain lineups. But he should now be our starting point guard. And I'd rather have Smart than Schroeder as a starter, especially because he already has chemistry with our starters that has, that's been around. And he gives us defense at a position where you need defense at, at this point in the NBA where all the best players are guards. Um, and most of the point guards are good, even on the bad teams. So you need somebody that can, you know, defend that position or even be switchable, which Marcus Smart is when he's locked in and engaged. And we're going to need him to be, especially if he wants his contract extension to be good or just get one in general. This season can help that if they can not agree to one. And we will have to see how that um, plays out, which we don't know yet. But at least they're talking about it and they're showing interest to bring Marcus Smart back. And, and that's all he can really hope for if he wants to stay at Celtic. The Knicks also pick up a 21-22 option on Damian Jones. Jones finished last season with the Kings, averaging 7 points, 4 rebounds, 1 assist. 
um, in 20 minutes over 17 games. Not a lot, not a huge sample size, but this is a rotation player, a backup player. So you're not really asking him to do much besides come in and fill a Pacific role and a Pacific need. And he was able to do that within 17 games. And that's why they feel like it's a low risk. The contract ain't worth much. It's waivable. He's replaceable if they want to get rid of him and try somebody else. And, you know, that that's a deal that works for him because he can continue to show you develop and improve. And he also can help the Kings out that way. And if it doesn't work, they can always let him go. Laurie Marketing update. Laurie Marketing receiving interest from the Mavs still. The Pelicans still. But now they add the Wolves and the Celtics in there. Obviously, the, the Bulls are looking for a sign-in trade so they can get something for Laurie Marketing, which is a couple picks. First round, they prefer. Two seconds is at the lowest, but that's still something and is better than nothing. And all these teams, to me, will be better having Laurie Marketing, especially depending on the price. And like I said, he is a solid big that can space the floor, but injuries have been a concern. Shooting consistency has been a concern. And ultimately, just toughness when it comes to rebounding and being a big in that paint has been a concern on him. But I still think he is a quality player in the league, and he has proven that when healthy. So I will vouch for him on that. Jeremiah Robinson Earl and, and the Thunder agreed to a four-year deal worth eight million. Robinson Earl was the 32nd pick overall. I mean, the 32nd pick in the 2021 draft, and now you know he's getting eight million guaranteed. You know, this is good for him and the Thunder because they liked him and they want to keep him around and they locked him up long term on a cheap contract that's going to cost them nothing. Nico Mannion still has the draft rights um, owned by the Golden State Warriors, but he will be playing in another country, which is Italy, basically. He'll be playing over there in Italy for that city, Italy, and he's going to, you know, play some basketball, grow, develop, and hopefully be better in the future. And... Since they still own his rights, he can still come over and contribute to them. The Warriors also agreed to a two-way deal with Chris Chioza. Remember, the two-way deals are more beneficial to the team than they are to the players. But considering that he showed that he can have a little promise and a little um, bit of skill, maybe they feel like giving him this contract gives them flexibility if it works or not. But they get him in, see what he can do, see what he can help the team with. If they don't like him, they can waive him. If they like him, he can come back next year, prove he can show some growth and improvement. And if he does, they can give him a cheap contract extension or they can just let him walk and go with somebody else. Frank Jackson also agreed to a two-year deal with the Detroit Pistons. In 40 games, the Pistons, he at, with for the Pistons, he averaged nine points. Two rebounds and nearly one assist in 18 minutes. That's pretty productive when you look at the fact that he played 18 minutes. Nine points is a high, high number, even though the Pistons lack talent and guys like Killian Hayes was injured. Um, it gave him opportunity to shine, and they ended up locking him up to a two-year deal because he was productive when he was needed. And that's what you want in veterans. That's what you want in young players. That's what you want if you're an NBA team. And at least they know that they got that from Jackson and they want to give him some type of commitment on a friendly contract because of what he did. Um, also, I don't even know how to say his name, but I think it's Dalton um, agreed to a two way deal with the Pelicans. They like what they've seen so far. want to try him out a little bit more. So they give him the two way. Alfred Payton also signs a one year deal with the Phoenix Suns. Has shown that he still doesn't have the offensive game, but he still showed that he can defend, he can play make a little bit, and he's a solid NBA point guard, and it just gives the Suns more depth at that position. And he is a guy that is tall enough to defend the two. Not really a great defender at the two position, but has been a solid point guard. And if anybody goes down for a standing amount of time, at least they got a third string point guard um, that can come in and contribute. Um, so to me, that's really about it when it comes to news and free agency. And outside of that, this has been pretty fun. This has been pretty good. And we're going to see what Schroeder does. He, he's on the a, a clock now. Could have got the longer years, could have got the more money uh, with the Lakers, but decided to test his feet in free agency. And it did not work. I don't know if it was his agent. I don't know if he didn't like playing with LeBron and AD. I don't know if he felt like he can go to a better fit. I don't know if he just didn't want to be with the Lakers 
I don't know what the reason is, but he took a big L this summer, probably the biggest L out of anybody, and it's unfortunate, but he fell into our, the Celtics' hands, fell right into our lap, and we had scoop him up, we had take him for a ride, and see what he can bring to the table and, and see how he approaches this season. The best part about it is he's on the team that still has talent, a team that's still trying to win, and a team that really does want him to come in and play his game. So we had take him. I'm excited about it to a certain extent. And Quinn Wade, basketball announcers, I'm gone, and I'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully, other than that, hope you guys enjoy your day or enjoy your night. Watch some summer league like I'm about to do, and I'm gone.